think it's fair to say that most of our audience would associate sliding head lathes with high volume turned components. I'm here today at Star GB in Derby and with Alec Warner uh, and we're going to dispel that myth, uh, so certainly worth a watch. Alec, um, that's the big point these days. You know, in, in, in my uh, sort of treading the board selling machines, I always used to think that a sliding head lathe was really just for turn parts in high volumes, but that couldn't be further from the truth, could it? You're quite correct. You know, all, all our machines, uh, machines have got at least seven axes, so they're, they're mill turn centers. So we do a lot of uh, prismatic parts as well as turn parts. And, and that's really the purpose of this exercise because we've got eight components here uh, that have actually been made on a star sliding head lathe and all of them are very heavy on the milling so even if a part is 70-80% milling that is still something that you should explore this type of machine for. It is, I mean some of these are demonstration parts just to show our capability, others are customer specific parts but each one does show you know, the, the milling capability of the various models that we've got in our range. So what's the advantage then to taking a component like this and doing it on a sliding head lathe and doing the milling on here? You know, does it make the manufacturing faster? It can do in some circumstances, but again, you know, sliding head machines are about unmanned operations. So, you know, if we can put three, four, even six meters of material in the one end, press the button and leave the machine running and we're making parts, you know, every minute or two minutes or whatever, you know, that's going to make the customer a lot of, uh, a lot of money. And is it as a result of the fact that you've got a lot more tools, so you've got a lot more cutting tools on the machines that you can do more operations, you know, collectively? It is. Uh, even our smallest machines, you can put like 30 odd tools in there. So you've got a lot of spindles, a lot of milling capability with the machines that've got the, the twin platinum or twin turret or platinum turret capability. You've got all those balanced milling operations that you can combine together. Certain models in our range, you've got the super positioning mode, so you can be finishing one fit feature on the part of one side and an alternative feature on the other part of the side. So all of these attributes of stars help to reduce the cycle time and make it more profitable to run that part on our machine. How many, how many engineers do you think are making components like this out there and not realising that actually there's a far more efficient way of making their parts which could in turn make them a lot more money, couldn't it? I think it's fair to say you know, over the last two to three years a lot more engineers are sort of seeing the light in terms of what is possible on sliding head machines and I think you know, that's partly down to sort of your channel and social media and people seeing parts that have come off sliding head machines in, in, in one hit so. And it's even more important these days to make sure you're as productive as possible, uh, reducing the, the idle times in manufacturing, making sure you, you know, operator intervention is not needed as frequently. But what about things like maintaining tolerances over long runs? Are these machines the right machines for that too? They are. I mean, our machines are very heavy duty. We've got big motors on the spindles, on the power tools, but they're also very stable machines as well. So um, achieving, you know, micron tolerance is, is the norm, really, for star sliding end machines. And we look at these parts here, and OK, we talk about the, the fact that there's more milling than turning, but what about the materials here? Because, you know, we see brass and aluminium, but, but you, can, you can do more trickier materials too, I assume. Absolutely. I mean with the heavier duty spindles that we have got, you know, the more exotic steels is, is, is commonplace on stars. And I think that differentiates us from some of the competition, to be fair. And is that why you've also introduced turrets onto some of these machines as well, to, to, for, for more powerful milling, uh, to have those more, more tools? I think with a turret, it gives you that extra flexibility. For sure, we can put more power through a turret than we can with a traditional platen uh, arrangement. But you know, this SV machine, it, it's got the best of both worlds. It's got the speed of a, a platinum machine with the versatility and, and, and the power of a turret machine as well. Uh, you've seen uh, significant increases in volumes of sales over recent years here at Star GB. Would you put that down to two things? Firstly, the machines and your support, but secondly, the fact that people are identifying new methods to be able to make parts they used to make very differently. I think there's, uh, there's several things. There's the uh, higher value parts, are coming more and more onto the sliding head side of uh, CNC turning, but I think also the the quality of engineers that we've got here. You now we're always looking at slightly different ways to do this, to do that, to manufacture parts in a more efficient, better way. And is the turnkey a real uh, a real key to your success here? The fact that engineers come to you and rely on your expertise, not just to sh to show them the theory, but actually put it into practice as well. It does, but I think. 
equally, it minimises the risk on the customer because if we can't manufacture the part in, 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 the, in the said time, we don't deliver the machine. Um, you know, last year we had five or six machines all in a row, all doing different turnkey projects. So it's something that we're very accustomed to do at Star, and you know we've been very successful over the years of achieving that.